Hi, and welcome to the lesson of partial differential equations. So in this class, we are going to talk about the reduction of uh, the order of partial differential equation. So we will see how to reduce uh, order of the partial differential equation by splitting it into the system of uh, ordinary differential equations. So let's take an example of uh, the convection diffusion equation. Uh, convection diffusion equation. In fact, uh, non-homogeneous convection diffusion equation with uh, time dependent boundary conditions. So the equation is given as U T plus U X equals u x x plus x sine t and the boundary conditions are given as uh, u x of 0 comma t equals 1 minus cosine t and uh, the second boundary condition says that as x tends to infinity the flux that is ux x comma t is bounded right and the initial condition is uh, given as uh, ux 0 comma t equals 0. So three conditions are given and uh, using these conditions we are going to solve this uh, problem but first we will reduce the order so here we can see that this is a second order partial differential equation so we will reduce it to the first order uh, in fact in the system of first order equation so uh, now consider that uh, this psi is equals to u then eta equals ux so therefore psi x is equals to ux equals to eta and psi t equals u t, right? So, and the uh, other thing is that we have uh, eta x, that will be u x x. So from equation one, we can find out u x x in terms of u t u x and the function. So u x x will be equals to u t plus u x minus x sine t, right? And then for u x x, we can write e x. That will be equals to psi t because u t is psi t plus u x is eta minus x sine t. So call it as equation two. And the third equation that is going to be used here is nothing but that is psi x equals to eta. That is equation number three, All right? From here. Now here we can see that this is a system of first order partial differential equations. And uh, now we will apply the Laplace transformations on these equations uh, to find the general solution. So applying Laplace transforms uh, and uh, so apply Laplace on equation number one. So it will be Laplace on eta x equals to Laplace on psi t plus Laplace over eta minus Laplace onto x sine t. Now this will be d eta over dx by the property and this eta t it will be psi, sorry this uh, psi t will be s psi minus uh, psi of x comma zero plus Laplace of eta it will be simply eta of s minus the Laplace of x sine t will be x over s squared plus one. So now this uh, psi x comma zero, so as we know that psi uh, is nothing but it is equals to u, uh, sorry, this is uh, 
Okay, so x comma zero, so we need u x uh, comma zero. So here we have the initial condition. This is not u x, but instead it's u of uh, zero comma t. It's not u x, right? So it's simply u of uh, zero comma t. Uh, sorry, uh, x comma zero, not zero comma t. It's x comma zero. So it's then this is the initial condition since uh, u x comma zero equals zero. So here we have uh, psi equals u. So psi of x comma zero is again. This implies that psi of x comma zero is equals to u of x comma zero. That will be equals to zero, right? So now if we plug this value, we'll get d e tau d x equals to s psi plus eta minus x over s squared plus one. Now if we see the second equation, that is uh, this one, psi x equals eta. So from here we can uh, find a relation for this uh, psi. We want to find this uh, psi, so we can differentiate this with respect to psi because we have relation psi x equals to eta. So to get uh, the equation in form of uh, one particular uh, variable, so here we have uh, d square eta dx square. If I differentiate the above equation with respect to x, so here is dx squared. That is equals to s d psi over dx plus d eta over dx minus 1 over s squared plus 1. Now this is uh, eta double prime equals to s. Now the psi x is equals to eta since so we can write eta plus for this eta prime minus 1 over s squared plus 1. Therefore, if we arrange this equation, we have a simple uh, second order non-homogeneous differential equation, which we are already familiar with how to solve it. So if I will solve this equation, I will get the result as uh, eta of x comma s equals to, I'm writing the a complete uh, solution, so it will be C1 e to the power alpha x plus C2 e to the power negative beta x plus 1 over s times s squared plus 1, where alpha equals 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4s over 2 and beta equals uh, that is uh, negative 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4s divided by 2. Okay. So this is uh, the general solution. Now we will use the boundary conditions to find these alpha and beta. So the first condition says that ux 0 comma t equals 1 minus cosine t. So this eta is nothing but this is ux as we initially assumed that uh, eta equals to ux. Therefore eta 0 comma t will be 1 minus cosine t. And when we uh, apply the Laplace transformation, so eta 0 s, this will be uh, 1 over s times s squared plus 1. Now plug in the boundary condition, so say this is equation number uh, 5, so equation 5 implies that eta 0 comma s is c1 e to the power 0 plus c2 e to the power 0. Uh, plus 1 over s times s squared plus 1 equals 1 over s times s squared plus 1. So this cancels out and c1 plus c2 equals 0. Now using the second boundary condition, that is limit x tends to infinity 
and u of x comma t is bounded which implies again that limit x tends to infinity uh, u of uh, x comma s is bounded when we apply the Laplace transformation and then plug this uh, and condition uh, this equation five so five implies that uh c1 e to the power infinity plus c2 e to the power negative infinity plus one over s into s squared plus one this is uh less than infinity that means that there is some value say it's a constant value say it k so this is zero so c1 equals uh let's say uh, now when it's less than infinity so we will uh, take it equality because this is if this is bounded then uh, this equals to some constant some number so c1 will be zero from here right so this implies that c2 is also zero because uh, this equation here and that is equation number c1 uh, this is c1 plus c2 equals zero so both of the constants are zero therefore the equation that is eta x comma s only reduces to one over s times s squared plus one so now this is uh, the solution of eta in terms of x comma s now if you apply the inverse transformation so this we will get in terms of function x comma t so the inverse transform of this function on the right side it will be one minus cosine t therefore eta x comma t equals one minus cosine t now this is the result for eta and we know that eta equals to uh, ux equals one minus cosine t so if we integrate this with respect to x, we will get x minus x cosine t plus some function of t because we are integrating partially with respect to t. Name is that equation number six. And then we have one more uh, equation that says that eta x equals psi t plus eta minus x sine t that was our equation number i think uh, equation number one here i uh, this one uh, let me show you the equation this this one right this equation so now uh if we find eta x from here we know that eta x is zero so eta x equals zero because if we differentiate this with respect to x it's zero equals psi t plus eta is one minus cosine t minus x sine t which implies that psi t equals x sine t plus cosine t minus one and now uh, integrate to find the psi so psi equals negative x cosine t plus sine t minus t plus function of x so again this is equals to u now combine now say this is equation number seven now combine the result of equation number six and equation number seven and we can see here that the function of t here we need the function of t and the function of t in this equation is sine t minus t that is only the function of t therefore we can say that f of t is nothing but this is sine t minus t so equation six implies that u equals x minus x cosine t x minus x cosine t plus sine t minus t and that is the solution for this uh, a non-homogeneous convection diffusion equation and so we can verify this ut will be equals to uh, x sine t 
uh, plus cos t minus 1, that is ut, ux is 1 minus cosine t, and u double x is 0. Now plug these values in the original equations, so this will be cos t minus 1 plus 1 minus cos t equals 0 plus x sine t. This cancels out, this cancels this. So 0 equals 0. This satisfies. And again, the first boundary condition, that is, uh, sorry, the initial condition, that is u of x comma 0, it will be x minus x cos 0 plus sine 0 is 0 minus 0. So this cancels and we get 0. Then the second boundary condition is ux of 0 comma t. So ux uh, will be 1 minus cos t and 1 minus cos t at x equals to 0 is again 1 minus cos t, right? And then ux of x comma t as x goes to infinity is again, we can see that this is bounded, right? So it's 1 minus cos t that is uh, again bounded, right? As, as x goes to infinity. So we are done with the solution. And we see that how to convert uh, a second order partial differential equation, uh, initial boundary value problem to the system of first order uh, partial differential equation, and then it's uh, easier to solve it, right? So you can verify the solution. You can apply direct Fourier class transform on this equation as well. That is the original equation, equation one, and solve it. But uh, for the purpose to show how to uh, solve this by converting it to, into the system of first order, equations we solve it in this manner so thanks for watching the video uh, that's all for the time being